Welcome into this segment of Behind the Pen presented by MostValuablePodcast.com. If you want to listen to the full podcast, go to blogtalkradio.com backslash Podcast. Also, we're on iTunes, so check us out there as well. Thank you all for listening as always, and enjoy the show. On that note, we're going to move on from uh, really good organizations in football to one that kind of is not as fun, and that's the Chicago Bears. We have to talk Chicago Bears football because talk this about, is talk about behind coaches the pen. who lost in the Super Bowl, right? Yeah, well, John Fox. Hey, he's had experience, Twice. not you know, <laughs> hey, turning into a winning culture, and we have yet to see that in Chicago. But it begins, kind of. Right. It, it, well, they're in the process, not really so much the beginning anymore, kind of moving forward. I look at this Bears team. I think they're still a little bit away, right? but they have something to build on, especially in that front seven on defense. That being said, what the conversation many of us are having around mm-hmm. the Bears and really all you can really talk about is that number three pick. And I, I watched the national championship game. I also watched the game before that Deshaun Watson played, and I want to base this conversation sort of around him. Is he worth the number three pick for the Bears, given the situation? Now, let me preface this by saying, what is the most, uh, well, highest position of need in any sport? It's quarterback. And in the Chicago Bears specifically, what do they need the most? Because we're assuming Cutler's gone. Do you really want to play Matt Barkley slash Brian Hoyer for uh, somewhat most of the season, whatever? Mm -hmm. It, is it so far-fetched to say that Sean Watson's worth the three pick for the Bears? I say no, and the reason why is, for me, I've seen so much this season, Like, and my biggest thing right now that is my knock against Deshaun Watson mm-hmm. is I question, I question the mental makeup a little bit. Really? And the reason why I say that is... Look back earlier in the year. I don't know. When Clemson was struggling and almost lost to teams that they shouldn't have, what was the big story? Deshaun Watson saying, don't call me a dual-threat quarterback. Whoa. I'm not a dual-threat quarterback. That's just him Which, betting on himself. Yeah, but it's my mind mm-hmm. of saying, how about you focus on your play on the field and blow out the teams you're supposed to and then not worry about what we're calling you. Well, he kind of backed it up. Dual threat. I don't care. I'm talking about This like, is more of a message for the draft stock and, than how to win a college well, football and game. It's, it's like Tim Tebow was a great college quarterback. He's not an NFL quarterback because well, he, he was that, you know, he was the mechanics were wrong, so much runner, wrong with it. Yeah. But he and, could run the ball in college. Yeah, the magic quarterback. Here's, and here's yeah. another thing. This is more recently <laughs> that... I know he wouldn't be, I don't think he'd be working with the Bears staff because I think if he played in the Senior Bowl this Saturday, he'd be playing with the South where Clemson is. But I know his big reason, well, he didn't say it, but I'm going to assume well, that his big, re- to come out. Well, his big reasoning was, I'm not going to play in the um, Senior Bowl. That told me... I don't want the Browns to be able to work with me. I don't want them to get a favorable well, I don't think, attitude I don't know of about me that. so I that think, the Browns don't. Like, oh, he doesn't, I don't know about he that. He doesn't want to go to Cleveland. That's what no. my mind is. But if I'm the Bears on the other side, I look at that and I see, huh, this is a kid that, A, we have questions about, doesn't even want to come out and work okay. with NFL yeah. coaches. All right, let me, let me counter you with that because I think, in my opinion, and this is just me and, and watching Deshaun Watson on the field, he's got something. He's, he's got magic. And, and you know what? Dak Prescott had that this year. We saw it. Now, maybe he— You know who played in the Senior Bowl? Dak Prescott. Well, listen, Worked hold on. NFL right. coaches. Now, now, with Dak Prescott, I, I, it's a similar, it's a different situation mm-hmm. because he had talent around him. Best offensive line in football, Ezekiel Elliott, top rusher in the NFL. And who drafted Given the Dak circumstances. Prescott? The team he worked now, with. Now, listen. With Deshaun Watson— why the hell would you go and play in the Senior Bowl when you have already proven yourself in the biggest games possible at the level of the sport you're playing at? And back-to-back it doesn't national have anything championship to do with... games. No, what else do you need to scout? It do- No, it's uh, not about the big thing with him in the Senior Bowl has nothing to yeah, do with his actual play. It's the NFL coach seeing play. if he's an NFL caliber starter in the first round. To me, it's not even anything to do with his play. To me, it's how do you work with the coaching staff. It gives not only the Browns, I mean... Yeah, I can get if he doesn't want to go to Cleveland. And everyone's bringing up the, oh, well, John Elway didn't want to go number one to, what was it, the Colts, that he was going to play baseball. And my point with that was Deshaun Watson is not, like, the same kind of player that John Elway was. We knew John Elway was, boom, the number one pick in an NFL draft. To me, it's more of how do you work with the coaching staff how are you as a coachable player and actually getting to work with you? And that's also something to note, that in this draft, there's no guarantee for a quarterback. Mm -hmm. Now, Ricky, I respectfully disagree with you entirely on this. I think Deshaun Watson is taking the smart move by not going out there for the Senior Bowl because the only thing you can do at this point 
is hurt yourself. Like, yes, there are chances to go out there and show them what. What, what, what more can he prove to these guys that he hasn't done already? Guess what? You can have private workouts with quarterbacks before the draft. That's totally a thing. He hasn't said no to that. Plus the combine. He, he still got the combine but and private workouts. This is more so him going, I don't want to take a flyer on getting hurt by some See, kid I don't, I don't who thinks that. he's going to get an NFL draft mm. pick in the sixth or seventh round because he comes out and he sacks me. I'm not going to take that risk on my body. I've got nothing more to show he's these He's got coaches. nothing to prove. That's exactly it. I've done everything that you can ask me to do in a college career. I, literally, there's nothing else he can do. I mean, this I, is just personality at I this point where he has time to disagree. talk to coaches. And that's combine, and that's personal interviews. Well, yeah. And the thing that I disagree the most on is let, he can say whatever he wants. Let's not get anything twisted. The reason, the main reason why he doesn't want to go to the Senior Bowl is he doesn't want to go to Cleveland. And Didn't I don't, say no, that, absolutely not. I don't. No, that's nothing and I to do with just, anything. It's not, like I said, you can say whatever you want. I look at the comments and I go, You can say what you want, but you I can't say the only reason. Right. I don't want to go it's to your opinion. Opinion. I don't want to go to number one. And no. That's... One thing I was going to say is I don't disagree with him. I wouldn't want to that's go your opinion. to Cleveland you can't, you can't put words this in his mouth. This is the but NFL, and these are it's... NFL organizations. I don't care if it's Cleveland. They've had a history of losing. You're getting drafted to play in the highest level of your sport. It doesn't matter what team you're playing for. If you're not going to the Senior Bowl because you don't want to be drafted by Cleveland, that's a load of horse. Well, and the thing about with the whole and I kind of hate it with the oh well I don't want to get injured I have nothing to prove he doesn't Obvi- obviously you do have something to prove because if you didn't everyone would be saying you're the number right. one pick so we know and where we not. stand on this conversation and I that's why drag the Bears shouldn't even draft any further them. shouldn't but even look for let's go let's go back to that because obviously the value at three is so astronomical in this situation especially with the Bears current situation obviously they need playmakers on the defensive end especially in the secondary there are players like Jamal Adams Malik Hooker I know you in your mock draft. Have the Bears taken Malik Cooker? However, when I look Spoiler, at... Spoiler, it's not even out yet. Sorry, yeah. sorry, I, I apologize <laughs> better, better, for all better those... Better <laughs> before we... Yeah. Yeah. Just, <laughs> just waiting for uh, Ricky's mock draft, because I know I am. So when I'm looking at this Bears situation right now, biggest position of need right now, obviously, is is quarterback, in my, in my eyes. However, is it worth spending that three pick on a quarterback, whether it's Kaiser, Watson, Trubisky... I don't like Trubisky only because of the lack of, an, uh, of experience. He's only played one year. Right. Obviously, highest accuracy rating in the entire country, one of them. Uh, but he was throwing a talented wide receivers there. In a pro style, he looks good. I don't want to talk about Trubisky. We're, lo- we're looking at Watson here. In my opinion of Deshaun Watson, there's something special about this I kid. I agree with you, Mike. There's absolutely something special about this kid. And we look at his performance in the national championship game. I think it was before halftime. It was a final drive. There was this one throw, and I'm only just picking this one out. It was it was sort of a, a, an out route for a receiver on the sideline. Just put it pinpoint in the pocket, two, three stop drop. Just nailed it, absolutely nailed it. Obviously, there are questions for Watson's uh, uh, tangibles, right? His, his mechanics and what he's going to do in, in the pros if that's going to translate from the college game. But there's something about it that makes it work and it makes it win. And if you're a quarterback, look at Aaron Rodgers. I'm not comparing the two. I'm saying Aaron Rodgers has some sort of magic. Yeah, I, I completely agree with you. I think that. He offers uh, a skill set that any offensive coordinator would love to have, and any team should really like think about because this is a, a chance to have a dynamic playmaker on your offense who forces defenses to think twice about how they're going to cover your team. All the defensive setups they're, they're going to use, like, all right, now not only do we have to cover wide receivers, running backs, tight ends, all this stuff, now we have to have a spy sit there and wait and watch on him because if we don't and he gets loose, he can he hurt can make us. A play. So. My only concern for Deshaun Watson being such a high pick is the fact that and we haven't seen a quarterback with that mobility, that play style, last very long in the NFL. See, now, with that being said, I'm not sure how it's much— It's relatively he's... new to, right. the, to the NFL being accepted. Russell Wilson's but... been been killing it, and he's like the first guy that comes to mind, mobile quarterback with success. But I'm looking right. at this situation for the Bears— all that being said, I just praised Deshaun Watson. Mm-hmm. I don't think he. I don't think the Bears can do it. I don't think he's worth a three pick for for the given the, the circumstances where the Bears the stand. Risk, the risk is just too high. And, yeah, and well, that's the thing. We haven't seen a guaranteed yes quarterback really since Andrew Luck slash well, Jameis Winston. I and, think Jameis more probably, so. Okay. Probably Jameis. And here's the thing. And the I don't most, see that in Deshaun. When it comes to the Bears, the most important pick in this draft is not even one that they control. It's the one that happens Going right, right before them? them because yeah. if Kyle Shanahan, because it, at this point it looks like he's going to Niners after the Super Bowl accept the job at the 49ers. Like I heard things that they uh, one guy was from Minnesota. I don't know where the other guy was. Basically, the Niners flew two guys to Houston 
basically to kind of ah, just go out to lunch with Kyle Shanahan just to see which one he hits it off with <laughs> as a possible um, GM for their team. So to me, it could be that if they go Mitch Trubisky, then if I'm the Bears, Jonathan Allen. Like I can't get that card up to the podium. So you're assuming quick enough. Miles Garrett goes one. Well, yeah, Miles Garrett I'm one a, is pretty solid unless something crazy well, happens. Unless he gets injured or something in like a workout. But I mean, I looked at the article and we talked about it. Like what was it a month or two ago? As soon as the Browns said astronomical grade, I said, oh, he's going number one. Like when you fall in love with a guy that much, yeah. your mind usually doesn't change and by Trubisky the time going you get to the draft. If he goes two, that could happen. It could because Very Kyle so. Shanahan. One guy I threw out on the onside kick that it'd be interesting is to see if Kyle Shanahan tries to get maybe a Kirk Cousins to the um, 49ers because he did work with Kurt a few years in Washington. But point being, if the Niners go quarterback. I go Jared. I go Jonathan Allen. And I, I agree call with him you. Jared Allen. I go Jonathan <laughs> Allen. But let's say Jonathan yeah. Allen is at off at two. I go either Hooker or Adams. And the one quarterback, a, they're in a great spot. The one quarterback I want to throw out there that's going to be one to watch for Bears fans. And if you're listening to this on Blog Talk Radio, you'll get to see the game after we talk about it. If you're listening to it on YouTube, the game has already happened. But Nate Peterman, quarterback out of Pitt, because this is a guy who. John Fox and this Bears staff are going to coach at the Senior Bowl. So where do you see him? Like Could what be a round? third rounder. Third? I mean, right now CBS has him as a fourth rounder, but if a good Senior Bowl, we still got like oh, you yeah, said, the combine, combine all that pro stuff. workouts. I think that if the Bears like what they see this weekend, sure. maybe it's a, well, why wait? Like, not waste, but why reach for somebody right. like With a Deshaun Watson at three when we can go after yeah. this guy we like. Another one, Deshaun Kaiser, if he falls into the second I, round for him. I was really high is, on Kaiser at the beginning of the season, yeah. but I don't know where he falls in the first see, or second I, round. I think that we're going to see, like like we do most years, is that run on quarterbacks go. And this, this kind of reminds me of uh, the Teddy Bridgewater year for quarterbacks, where it's like not one guy stands out as mm-hmm. he's going to be the guy for this year, but there's a lot of guys who have the talent mm-hmm. to be, you know, everyday starters in the NFL. They and, could and, develop. I mean, yeah. you've got four of them that could go in the first round. Right. Watson, Trubisky, Kaiser, and Mahomes. Yeah, I don't think Mahomes is. I think Mahomes is for sure second. I I would agree, but if we make a run at quarterbacks, there might be a team at the very end that goes, ah, we'll trade with New England to get Mahomes. Eh, <laughs> we'll, we'll see about that. But, yeah, I think that Kaiser, if he's there at, at their second round through, that that should be a lock instantly. So even like you said, maybe maybe you have to go back up in the first to get mm-hmm. him. But I think he is the answer. I think that you you play it safe in round and you take best player available, whether it is someone like Jonathan Allen who is just an absolute stud on that defensive line, which sure up. You already talked about our front seven really came together at the end of this last season. We ended up top ten in defensive and it, and overall ra- ratings. And it's just like, all right, we could sure up that position, sure. The the big concern er, for me is the secondary and oh yeah, the nice thing about this year is there's about seven guys I think seven to ten guys in that secondary who I have with first to early second round grades who are going to be available in the second and third round probably there's 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 a lot of guys there's such good depth there that one we guy, have a good chance to kind of fill in that role one guy out of Iowa that they are coaching in the senior bowl that I like Desmond King. Could be Entirely one that you possible. get in the second. I mean, he's a first, second rounder right now. So as we wrap up this Chicago Bears conversation, as well as this entire podcast, you guys sticking around on Blog Talk Radio, you guys are the best. Thank you for listening throughout. But I want to I want to bounce off what both of you mm-hmm. guys were saying. I love, Ricky, what you were saying about Jonathan Allen, as well as Dave talking about the front seven. I completely agree. I think Jonathan Allen is not only the safe pick, but the right pick to make. Jonathan Allen, if you add him to this front seven, think about it. Will Young, Pernell McPhee, right? Uh of Dr- course, you're Dr- stay healthy. Darrell Dr- Freeman, of course. Of course. But that just adds to the death. Eddie Goldman, Akeem Hicks was a great offseason signing. And we see Leonard Floyd emerging as this legitimate player. And he was worth the ninth overall pick last year. This is a big draft for Ryan Pace, I think. And plus, you have two picks in the top 36. So yeah. you really can't screw this up if you're the Bears. But, uh, but it is the Bears. It is, it the, is the Chicago Bears. Bears. All right, some final thoughts. I love also looking at uh, the situations and the depth at the secondary like what you guys were just mentioning, 
Uh, Jamal Adams, I mean, oh, man, it's tough to pass on a guy like that, but Jonathan Allen, I think, is a safer pick. So, so for me, best player available if it's Jonathan Allen, you got to do it. Well, it it all, like I said, comes down to what the Niners are going to do. If they take quarterback, like I said, I can't get that card with Allen's name on it up to the commissioner quick enough. But if the Niners go Allen, which I think they should do, I would do, then with the Bears it becomes – the kind of me, the debate of who do you want? Do you want Hooker or do you want Adams? You want the ball skill guy or you want the guy with the athleticism? So it's really what the Niners do and then reacting to it. That's that's fair. And I don't know, I don't really have a huge preference one way or the other because I think both guys are going to excel at the next level. Mm -hmm. Honestly, it's just watching the Bears play and watch that secondary disappointment. Like, just give me something there. Give me Basically, some hope. Basically, Dave is saying, I don't trust you, John Fox, and the staff to develop Hooker's athleticism and develop Hooker. It's, all, it's as same reason I would avoid guy. Peppers. Like, uh, I, mean, I, I would not. Uh, the defensive put, I mean, staff, Vic Fangio, I think John Fox knows defense. i got to give them credit there. But it's just overall, I'm just kind of just sad. Until, <laughs> he, get, until he gets just, hurt somehow. I want to see, see them get yeah, better. But by God, the end of the second round, yeah. I, just, I need to have a new quarterback for this team and a secondary uh, someone in the secondary. It's going to be an important on top of that? draft. Wonderful. Very yeah. important draft for Ryan Pace. And yeah, guys, at least you guys have a pick in the first round. Oh, no. Sam Bradford. But, but yeah, Sam, Sam hey, B, he had the, he he had the set percentage. The record. Five and over the record. Hey, it was a good season. <laughs> we'll win the Super Bowl next year in our own stadium. Well, it's okay. well hopefully Teddy Bridgewater can walk. Sure. And on that note, guys, thank you so much for jumping on to Behind the Pen. This was a fantastic conversation. We had Bulls today. We talked Super Bowl preview, a little quarterback conversation. And for this Bears segment, really awesome conversation with Sean Watson and where the Bears stand at the number three pick. Remember, if you're on blogtalkradio.com backslash most available podcast, be sure to share it. And uh, you could do that via Twitter. Now, we're on Twitter at most available pod. Also, subscribe to our channel on YouTube, Most Valuable Podcast. We're moving on up. We're almost there. Ricky, we get to roast you soon. I'm looking forward to that very much. I, so. I can't wait. Give I us gotta, a like. I got to shave beforehand. I can't wait. No, leave shave it. Beforehand. Oh, well, yeah, look 10 years younger when you do. Yeah, I do. I look but, like a baby face. Leave a like down below if you could. It really helps out our channel. Leave a comment. Have a discussion in the in the comment section. We love reading that and getting some feedback. You guys are the best. For Dave Oster, for Ricky Woodmer, I'm Mike Rankin. This is Behind the Pen. And as always, guys, we will see you all next time. Thank you guys for sticking around for this segment of Behind the Pen. If you want more Most Valuable Podcast content, click on the video up above because I don't know why you wouldn't want to keep listening to our voices every day. But again, guys, thank you all for listening. We really do appreciate you.